Assalamu alaikum and uh, good afternoon. We talk about uh, digital leadership in government environment. So why leaders or government leaders need to adopt technologies in this new era? And what are factors that influencing them to adopt? So this is in brief what we are going to talk about today. Uh, my name is Ahmed Darwish. I'm the head of digital delivery in Bank El Bilad. However, my uh, doctorate of business administration study in Newcastle University was in digital government in specific. So that's why this topic for me is very interesting and I hope that it's going to find it also very interesting for you. Okay? Shall we start? Today we have a lot of disruptive uh, technologies uh, uh, surrounding us including IoT, including digital signature, including biometrics. For digital, for example, we have smart cities uh, as, a, as a new era also uh, disrupting the, the management and monitoring of the cities. For example, um, you can have, um, let's say, detection of the rain. So if somebody is booking, let's say, a play yard, uh, for soccer match, match or, or any other, uh, let's say, activities, we can cancel the reservation and notify them that we will have a rain today or tomorrow, so maybe your reservation will be cancelled and we can notify them. And, for example, governments, they have disaster uh, situations where they have to manage um, uh, population and how they move, how they act, and what they have to do from their side as a government in order to mitigate the risk of that disaster. So these kind of things today are um, the context or influencing the, the digital leaders in government to adopt technologies. So it's not like before when they rely only on uh, simple monitoring or simple uh, tools to uh, automate. Now they are working into digitalization. Okay? So all these kind of disruptive technologies are coming into the picture and digital leaders have to adapt. So uh, my study in digital government was about why digital leaders or why government leaders should adopt new technologies. Okay? The end of the study, we've, we have found that we have 14 domains of factors influencing that decision, including social, eco-social, economic, political, uh, environmental, organizational. Some of them are government-specific, for example, uh, decreasing the unemployment rate or uh, increasing the GDP of the country. So all these factors are surrounding us and putting the digital leader into a context that mandates him or her to go for technology adoption. So these factors are almost 90 plus factors, let's say 94, 95. 18 out of these factors are, let's say, major. So maybe one factor only can influence their decision to adopt. For example, the political willingness. So if there is a political will to adapt to technologies and it's something coming especially in the Middle East from the top down, I think they, they obey to the rules and, and adapt. So, uh, for example, if there is um, a direction like Vision 2030 that we have today in Saudi Arabia, these kind of factors will influence their decision and mandate them to adopt technologies in order to meet that vision or take the uh, whole kingdom into the next maturity level, for example. Okay? So those 14 domains of factors are today uh, influencing that decision of the government leaders, so there is no option for them to say yes or no. Most of the time, digital leaders are in a context that they have to adopt technologies in order to meet or achieve some objectives at the country level or even at the regional level or at the world or global level. For example, issues that we have globally, okay, they have to act 
For example, the COVID-19 situation. There was no option for digital uh, and government leaders not to adopt, for example, the application like Tawakkalna that we have in Saudi. Okay? So this kind of adoption is a must in certain situations, including the global disasters or even local vision or directions or objectives. Clear? Any questions so far? Okay. This is the ranking of the government according to the United Nations Index. This is a worldwide index. I, I think most of you haven't heard about this before. The governments, digital-wise, which is the e-government adoption, has an evaluation made by the United Nations every couple of years. So 2020, uh, that was the last time when we had that uh, report putting all countries in a rank according to the digitalization and digital level that they have reached, especially in e-government. Okay? So, starting from 2010, then 2012, 14, 16, 18, and 20, this is what you have here in the table. Okay? And this shows the rank of some of the Arab countries where Saudi Arabia, you can see here, is in the third rank. So worldwide, Saudi Arabia started as number here, 58, progressing until now we are at level or rank 43. Okay? Same for UAE, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Egypt, and Jordan. That index is categorizing and ranking the 190 plus countries across the world in terms of adoption of technology of e-government, okay? Um, the literacy of the population, how many PCs or mobile uh, smartphones per population. For example, Saudi Arabia in 2012 were ranked number one worldwide in the adoption of mobiles. So cell phones were about 119% growth, with a growth rate of 119%, compared to other countries which they normally below 100. So each person in Saudi Arabia used to handle more than, or some of the people, Yani, used to handle more than one cell phone. So that's why the percentage was even more than 100%. So the adoption of the smart uh, phones, PCs, laptops, um, let's say uh, tablets is also considered as a factor compared to other countries. How many people are using the digital uh, services and government services from different channels? All these factors are accumulatively counted and they rank these countries accordingly. So digital leaders are also in the government are also under the pressure of this competition. Okay? Today, as you know, in Saudi Arabia, we have a lot of e-government services, and we have touched a lot of them in our daily life or in our lifestyle, including, for example, Absher, including Tawakkalna, Sahati, Atamarna for Hajj and Umrah, okay? And you know that some of these applications are coming in integration way. So when you, let's say, apply for Umrah in Atamarna, you can see it from let's say Tawakkalna. So there is also an integration between these applications, so it's not only isolated adoption, but also integrated adoption, okay? Some of the countries also are doing adoption at the international level, not only within the same government. Here you have adoption. For example, Saudi Arabia and UAE and Jordan, they have some adoption for customs. So when um, the shipment is moving from UAE to Saudi Arabia to Jordan, before it reaches Saudi Arabia, the data can be entered in the system and the system is aware, or the people in Saudi customs, they are aware of what's going on and what is coming from UAE going to Jordan through Saudi Arabia. Same, we have adoption between Egypt and Jordan for the uh, employment. So any Egyptian labor working in Jordan his data is there in the database. And there is integration between Jordan and Egypt in terms of 
uh, employees moving from one country to another because they are moving with the ID only. There is no visa need for Egyptians and Jordans or the Jordanians to move into the other country. Okay? So these services, as well as being utilized by citizens, they are also consumed by third parties or uh, service consumers. Like, for example, in banking, we use AppShare for account opening. So when you open an account digitally with any bank, they ask you for username and password for AppShare. So when you enter that username and password, you are authenticated as a legitimate customer to open an account with the bank. So those are trusted sources as well for third parties and private sector to utilize for their needs as well. Just like uh, open banking, we have here also open government. Okay? Uh, the world, as we mentioned now, is changing and moving fast, and there is a rank between countries. So today, maybe Saudi Arabia will be number 39. Next year, you might be number 30, because you have moved faster than others. So today, it's not about the size of the country only. It's not about the big will beat the, the, the small, but the faster will beat the slow. Okay, so we have to move faster than uh, what used to move before. So here, it takes all the running you can do to keep you in the same place. However, if you want to get somewhere else, you have to be at least double speed. And this is from the uh, Red Queen, uh, uh, Lewis uh, Carroll's uh, story. If you remember, when they look at the crystal uh, glass, and they have mentioned this in that uh, uh, fantasy in 1871, which they are using now as a, you know, a metaphor or with a, um, as a encouragement for people to move faster and faster because digitalization now is not a slow, uh, let's say, way of doing things. So leadership style shouldn't remain the same. Today, digital leaders should be fast, should understand the technology, should be aware of the context, should be aware of other uh, factors influencing them, including all uh, what we have mentioned in the 14 domains, like, for example, social factors, eco-social factors, um, political factors, legal factors, environmental factors, and let's say international factors. So digital leaders in the government are under pressure to make sure that they are competing and taking their country to the next level. So the digital leader, and this is from BIBF Institute, digital leaders quadrants are being either junior with very low digital leadership capabilities and um, um, leadership, uh, let's say, uh, uh, digital capabilities in terms of technicality of the digital, um, let's say, government. Uh, so moving uh, to techies who are only, or techies, sorry, who are only understanding the digitalization and the technology into someone who has the leadership as well as technical aspects. So they are the expected leaders of the future. So the technical aspect is only one dimension plus the leadership in order to be able to be a successful digital leader in government sector. Same applies to other industries, but as we mentioned that the context of the government uh, is very special. You have wide range of customers, you have wide range of services, you have wide range of uh, compliance, regulation, security, country or national security. So these aspects make the things much complex for government leaders rather than other industries. Today we have a volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous environment. Okay? Things are moving fast. We have to work under ambiguity. We have a lot of things might not be clear from day one. We as leaders, we have to make sure that we consider the VUCA factors in our 
um, let's say, day-to-day -day activities and in our development, vision, direction, okay? All kind of things of the VUCA, okay, should be considered during taking the decisions. So leaders today are not taking decisions under certainty. They are always under uncertainty. So they have to face this and to have to manage uh, the uncertainty, the volatility. So sometimes we have very fast and the fast changing market, which we have to follow. If you are not there from day one and you take other direction, you will lose the competition and you might be lower ranked in the at least international index of the United Nations. In addition to that, we have diversity in our environment. Today we have four generations we are serving as digital leaders. We have the baby uh, boomers who are the old people. We have Generation X who are now maybe in, in 50s and 60s. We have Generation, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Y who are the millennials. And we have Generation Z. And very soon we will have also Generation Alpha, who were born after 2010, okay? So 2010 generation today, they are, let's say, 12 years old, and they are start getting services also from the government. Today, vaccination is becoming to this age, so Ministry of Health is dealing now with Generation Alpha in their portfolio. So we are not only dealing with one kind of customer, in terms of the generations. And you know, each generation has their own digital acceptance and um, let's say uh, understanding. So the millennials, the generation Z and generation alpha are digital natives. They speak the digital language. They have never maybe uh, saw a PC, which we used to see in the old ages where we have that PC and CPU and screen, mouse and keyboard, they only see the mobile and the tablet. Okay, so if you told them now, uh, what, what is the invoice? They don't know what is invoice. They only know the e-invoice. They know only that they are receiving an SMS for their transactions. Okay, they don't expect and, and understand the old language that we maybe as Generation X or baby boomers can understand. So this is a diversity that digital leader in government has to handle. What else? A culture difference between different people working in the same organization. So we have Saudis, we have experts, we have visitors, we have other, uh, let's say, nationalities, uh, different uh, people coming from different uh, places. So the diversity also in the culture and the work environment, not only from different generations, but also from other factors that digital leader has to handle. Okay, so all these kind of things are uh, to be handled in a proper way in order to be able to uh, achieve and lead the organization into success. Okay, there is another aspect which happened after COVID-19. Today, 35%, and this is as per 2019 statistics, let's say one third of the people working in the United States are freelancers, okay? Freelancer means that you don't have full control of him or her. So he's working for himself. He's serving you as well as other customers. So if you want to prioritize things and allocate him or dedicate him fully for your projects and maybe digitalization, this might not be possible, okay? So the world is moving faster towards more, let's say, freelancing. So employment rate now is becoming lower and lower because of such change in the market. This has also to be considered when you plan for your next move. And especially now we are moving faster. So normally the, the five years plan and these kind of long-term plans now are not valid anymore. Now we are mostly talking about two to three years, let's say, plan as digital leaders because the market is moving very fast and uh, ever than ever before. Listen and recognize innovation. 
today majority of the organizations are accepting ideas we have now innovation labs we have digital factory majority of the organizations now are thinking about having a dedicated workspace for innovation so people can sit together and try to innovate follow any let's say model like for example canvas business model which you can let's say uh, if you have any new service or new product you can understand who are the prospect customers and their persona what are the expected market share what is the expected let's say partnership that i need to do how many people or how many companies or organizations that i need to partnership with in order to uh, deliver this service okay so a lot of factors especially in business models are also to be considered uh, to be considered during uh, this innovation and uh, let's say development leaders of yesterday they used to stand in front of the team and give instructions today leadership is not like that we have to change our leadership style to be like the round table okay so you don't maybe identify who is the leader here or who is maybe the chief digital officer from the others he accepts let's say any criticism he accepts new ideas he is discussing with them like one of them he is not the one to give direction and my way or the other way okay or the highway for example so today leaders has to or have to listen to the ideas and accept these ideas and maybe we are doing sometimes what's called elevator speech so if anyone has a new idea he can take less than one minute to explain his idea we all vote for the idea and ask questions in order to be able to accept or reject the, this idea and we move to the next one so we do this let's say quarterly or twice a year or maybe once a year to accept new ideas from the team and this kind of uh, let's say practiced um, let's say um, um, uh, agenda and accepting ideas from others is always enriching the organization and bringing new ideas because sometimes you might be as a, a chief digital officer or a leader uh, think about one direction and maybe one small member of the team maybe he's a fresh graduate can bring you an innovative idea that can bring a lot of value to your organization not only in terms of money but also in terms of uh, service availability service provision and so on you have to go for data analytics and we are missing this a lot in our um, countries uh, however as you remember uh, at the covid 19 time if you know that Sadaya, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Interior, and some other organizations, I think there was a consortium of about seven or eight ministries, they were taking decisions based on data. So they have the data that can help them to take decision. When they lock down, they take that based on a decision. When they remove all, uh, let's say, restrictions, that was also based on the decision. Last time I was in a meeting with one of the people from Ministry of Health, he told us that when we take the decision to remove all restrictions from travel, from anything, was based on real statistics that we got from uh, Sadaya about number of infections, uh, vaccination, how many number of people or percentage of people already got vaccinated, as you know that more than 80 percent was enough to protect the whole country from any uh, let's say um, um, uh, uh, disease or propagation again you have to consider the volume veracity uncertainty of data so sometimes you might receive data that might not be trusted okay so you have to make sure that you are receiving trusted data from trusted sources and a lot of uh, uh, time that we are expecting this data from the government so government normally uh, uh, accumulate this data and if you remember Ilm, when they start if you remember in uh, early 20,000 2002 when they start collecting and fixing the data of the NIC for our national uh, let's say civil data 
it was a big, a big shift for the whole country. Today we are relying on a trusted data because of that effort done 22 uh, years ago. Without that effort, we cannot be at this stage where we can open accounts digitally, where we can trust data, where we can have an exact number of people uh, everywhere. Okay? Uh, before the last slide, you have to go intelligent. Use AI, RPA, and smart solutions, conversational AI, in order to be able to better manage your services and provide better services for your customers. This is very important for any chief digital officer today. Without having data and smart way of handling things using AI and these capabilities that we have today, you are going to be left behind. Tomorrow, others will be taking decisions based on uh, real data, which we have seen in the previous slide, or using AI and these capabilities that we have today, and thanks to the technology for that, you will be taking wrong decisions. You will be behind others. Others will take the right direction, and you might be looking at the wrong direction, taking your organization into another direction which is not in the right way. Okay? So being intelligent is very important. And the last is to go agile. You have to be fast. As we mentioned that today, it's not the big that will beat the small. It is the fast will beat the slow. Okay? And as you know, agility is one of the key pillars for any uh, chief digital officer in order to innovate and be able to compete in the market. If you are slow, you might take years to provide a service that others will take the leadership and uh, be first in the market before you. And customers today, they are not loyal like before. So if they found the same service somewhere else, they will immediately jump to take it from there. They are not loyal like before. 80% of the customers today, when they ask them if you are uh, uh, working with one, let's say, entity or one service provider, and then you find another service provider giving better service, are you going to shift? 80% say yes, definitely. And guess what? Today, with this fast speed and digital era, it took the person less than two minutes to decide if he is going to continue using your application or he's going to change to another one. So they install the application, and within two minutes, they take the decision either to continue or to uninstall your application. So it's very fast. It's very critical now. It's not like before. Agility is a must to have in any organization, especially in government where we have a legacy system, bureaucracy, and these kind of things, which is adding another challenge to the digital leaders. Thank you so much. I'm happy to receive any questions. Uh, after maybe two weeks, you will find the video on the channel that I'm sharing majority of the presentations and panel discussions that I had before. So you can um, uh, subscribe and more than welcome to watch and, and see all videos that we have shared before. Our uh, videos are mainly dedicated for GCC uh, domain or countries. So if someone is working maybe abroad or you want to know about GCC context, I think this new uh, TechDG channel will be very useful for him. And we will, inshallah, continue adding more and more videos um, uh, in the future. Thank you so much.